It's Monday, April 5th, and this is now on H&N. Of course, we're mindful of variants. After several months, Kauai welcomes back Trans-Pacific travelers. New at noon, UH football pauses all in-person activities due to what's being called COVID-19 protocols. Week two of the Derek Chauvin trial, I'm Femi Redwood with what the police chief said on the stand. The defendant violated our policy. These stories plus breaking news regarding rent relief on Oahu, coming up on This Is Now. Um, as you know, the, the county does uh, issue their orders uh, and the framework um, for the tier system is actually in the county order. Uh, and so uh, the mayor would have to make a decision. It's very clear that by the benchmarks, um, this Wednesday, uh, we will um, definitely be in tier two. Uh, and the question just becomes um, what would happen uh, you know, the primary difference between Tier 2 and Tier 3 is gathering sizes. Um, uh, in the Tier 2 definition, it would go back to uh, 5 instead of 10. So that was Governor Ige this morning on the Star Advertiser's Facebook feed. Created a little bit of confusing, making us think, are we going back to Tier 2 or not? Well, Mayor Rick Blangiardi just moments ago at another press conference said he is dead set against rolling back tiers. We're going to follow this all day long here at H&N. Governor has a press conference coming up at 2.30, so I'm sure he'll get more questions about that as well. Meantime, we just got those numbers from the State Department of Health seconds ago. Ashley, what were they? So the State Department of Health is reporting 95 new cases today and no new fatalities. We'll have the breakdown for you on our H&N digital platforms. Meanwhile, Honolulu Mayor Rick Blanchard, he just wrapped up a press conference on a new rent relief program for Oahu households. Here's what he had to say just a short time ago. We are finally in this hour of something that we have been working very diligently on for some time now, and that is uh, the beginning of our rent and utility relief program. We're really fortunate to get $114 million from the federal government uh, to hopefully be able to distribute to those most in need in a very equitable uh, and expeditious manner. We hope to be able to do this very efficiently. In order to be eligible for the program, Oahu households need to show certain qualifications, such as a reduction in wages or has qualified for unemployment benefits. At least one household member is at risk of losing their housing. Now, households that meet the requirements can receive up to $2,500 a month for rent and utilities for up to a year. The current program can pay current bills, future bills or bills going back to March 2020 and payments will be made directly to landlords and utilities and landlords can actually apply on behalf of their tenants. Now we'll have all this information posted on our website right now at hawaiinewsnow.com. Let's get to, get to some more news developing right now. Let's take a live look outside Ala Moana Beach there. You should see some surfers lined up there and some par parasailers in the background. While well, lots of people are still coming to the state right now with spring break and that holiday weekend, we've seen almost 580,000 Trans-Pacific arrivals in the last month alone. People are just probably like just tired of being at home. <laughs> so more than 6 million people went through TSA security since Thursday to fly over the Easter holiday weekend. Sunday's 1.5 million airline passengers is 10 times the number that traveled on Easter last year, but still well below the 2019 levels. The surge in passengers was enough to force Delta to fill middle seats, despite its promise not to do so until May. It just seems like all of a sudden it's a rush. Larry Pettis says he felt more comfortable flying because he'd been fully vaccinated. Roughly one-fifth of U.S. adults fall into this category. We know for vaccinated people, it's reasonably safe to do this. But among unvaccinated people, it is not yet. 
And I'm worried that it's going to lead to, unfortunately, more infections and more hospitalizations. So let's talk about here at home. 21,000 Trans-Pacific travelers arrived in our state yesterday. More than 25,000 passengers came to Hawaii on Saturday and nearly 24,000 on Friday. This comes as Hawaiian Airlines sharpens its call for unfeathered travel by those who are fully vaccinated. Here's what Howard Dykus had to say about that this morning on Sunrise. Before, Hawaiian Airlines was gently suggesting rethinking the safe travels program. Now the CDC says flatly, fully vaccinated flyers should be exempt from testing or quarantine. And in response to that, Hawaiian is now explicitly asking the state to align its rules with the new federal guidelines. The new CDC guidelines still recommend masking. State officials this week are reviewing their policies. So top U.S. health officials say vaccination is the solution to COVID-19 fatigue. This is not going to last forever because every day that you get 4 million, 3 million people vaccinated, you get closer and closer to control. Fauci also said today that he doesn't think the U.S. government will be the main mover behind vaccine passports, but that individual entities could do something with the idea. And now some governors are even saying they don't support the use of these so-called vaccine passports. Well, I, I don't support vaccine passports. I, I don't think it's necessary and I don't I don't think it's a good thing to do uh, in, in America. I think, it, you know, it won't happen for at least four weeks or so. Um, you know, there is um, every state is doing it a little bit differently and some states are better organized than others. Kauai rejoins the state's safe travels program for Trans-Pacific travelers today. We talked to Mayor Derek Kawakami about this latest development. Well, we went from May to April because um, our forecast for vaccine deployment um, was stellar. So we were able to move up the rejoining date. And we had the visitor industry, the Grand Hyatt and other hotels say that they want to be a part of um, disease management and mitigation. So they're going to be doing voluntary testing. The Chamber of Commerce has jumped on board with Kukua Card. You know, we're in a much better place today to have travelers coming in. And I think um, as more vaccines get out, uh, generally speaking, uh, the entire world will be in a better place. Of course, we're mindful of variants, but you know, people understand at this point, the best mitigative measures is their own behavior, wearing a mask and trying to avoid these real large gatherings that could turn into super spreader events. Going into this decision, how much did businesses and their input uh, really weigh into your decision to open things up? Oh, you know, our operation is strong because we listen to um, all facets of our society. We listen to public health experts, we weigh in the economic impacts. You know, one thing that has helped keep some of our mom and pops alive is the fact that we were operating in tier four for a very long time. Um, of course, the travel industry and all businesses that are really uh, dependent on the travel industry were the ones that took the biggest hits. But, you know, our bars, restaurants, for the most part, have been able to operate. Uh, youth sports have been able to get back online. So this is gonna be a much needed injection of uh, economic stimulus from our visitor industry. Yeah, Mara, I, I'm sure you're going to closely monitor this. Is is there any point where you could foresee opting out again? Well, the first course of action is, of course, prevention. So we're going to be reminding people to please take their own preventative measures. If they are on the fence of getting a vaccine and decide to, please go to quiet.gov forward slash vaccine for more information. Wear your mask. Um, we're trying not to. You know, the first step is to do a surgical investigation into contact tracing so we can quickly uh, detect and, and isolate and separate those cases from the general public. Um, of course, you know, we do have our tiered system, um, but when we go back into more restrictive tiers, that is even more of a disruption to our economy. So this is truly a test of our ability as a community to do the right thing because we're all leaning on each other to, to be there for each other. As Kauai re-enters the Safe Travels program, the county is also ramping up vaccinations. Today, all residents 16 and older can book an appointment to get a shot on the island. 
Kauai is leading the state with vaccinations per county. More than 37 percent of its population has received at least one dose. On Oahu, more essential workers can get vaccinated starting today. This group includes construction, finance, media, retail, IT, clergy and more. Health officials tell us 121,000 doses are set to arrive in Hawaii this week. Maui Health is also expanding its vaccinations today. All residents over 16 can now schedule an appointment. After posting some of the lowest vaccination numbers in the state, Maui is actually the second leading county with over 28% of its residents receiving at least one dose. Hawaii Island opened up vaccinations to residents 16 and older over the weekend. More than 100 million Americans have received at least one dose of the coronavirus vaccine, but many experts are still worried about a potential fourth wave. Alice Barr reports from Washington, D.C. For the fourth straight week, U.S. coronavirus cases are trending upward amid record spring break travel and loosening restrictions in many states. Cases are increasing nationally, and we are seeing this occur predominantly in younger adults. Health officials believe contagious new variants are driving the increase. They're urging caution as more schools reopen. Many outbreaks in young people are related to youth sports and extracurricular activities. Leading health experts are divided over whether we're headed for another major surge as vaccinations are hitting a record pace. The U.S. is now averaging more than 3 million shots a day, hitting 4 million in a single day for the first time this weekend. So we're headed in the right direction. The worst thing we could do right now would be to mistake progress for victory. The Senate's top Republican appealing to one group that's among the most reluctant to vaccinate, Republican men. I'm a Republican man. I want to say to everyone, we need to take this vaccine. President Biden today acknowledging Americans' pandemic exhaustion in an Easter address without the traditional egg roll. The virus is not gone, and the second year in a row, most will be apart from their families. Still, hope on the horizon, largely pinned on the efforts to get shots in arms of as many Americans as possible. The CDC also today easing fears that you can contract COVID-19 from a contaminated surface, saying the risk of transmission that way is low. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. New at noon, the UH football program is taking a temporary pause to all in-person activities and spring practices due to COVID-19 protocols. In a statement released by the university, UH says that all team meetings will be held virtually and practices will be postponed for the next several days. It was not specified in the release if a member of the program contracted the virus, just saying protocols are being followed. The Bows started their spring training camp last week with a 15 practice schedule running through the end of April. No word on if missed practices will be made up at a later date. The murder trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin is entering its second week. Femi Redwood reports. The defendant violated our policy in terms of rendering aid. Minneapolis Police Chief Madeira Arredondo testified Derek Chauvin did not follow department policies and procedures when he knelt on George Floyd's neck for nearly 10 minutes last May. To continue to apply that level of force to a person proned out, handcuffed behind their back, um, that, that in no way, shape, or form is anything that um, uh, is by policy. Arredondo fired Chauvin after reviewing video from a city-owned camera, as well as a bystander video showing Floyd's final moments. When I look at Exhibit 17, um, and when I look at the facial expression of, of, of Mr. Floyd, that does not appear in any way, shape, or form that that is like to moderate pressure. Defense attorney Eric Nelson cross-examined the police yes. chief about techniques used to de-escalate a situation. All of these policies are, by their very language, are situationally dependent, right? They have a qualifier to them. Agreed? Yes, I'd agree with that. Jurors also heard from the emergency room doctor who testified Floyd died from a lack of oxygen or hypoxia. I felt that 
at the time, based on the information I had, it was more likely than the other possibilities. And, and doctor, is there another name for death by oxygen deficiency? Asphyxia. Chauvin's defense countered that oxygen deficiency could be the result of ingesting the opioid fentanyl, which was found in Floyd's body. Last week, paramedics who arrived at the scene of Floyd's arrest testified they could not find a pulse. Femi Redwood, CBS News, New York. All right, we're going to have much more on that still developing story coming up tonight on the CBS Evening News and the NBC Nightly News. Going to switch gears here just a bit. And you know, every day when we take this shot, this beautiful shot live overlooking Aloha Tower, it makes me realize we don't have any windows here in the H&M Digital Center. And it makes me a little jealous of anyone who's true. out there getting to enjoy that 77 degree weather that is currently out there right now. Let's see how the rest of the week's going to shape up. Here's Guy Hockey. How's it on this Monday? We've got really nice trade wind weather across the state. Things are looking good, although we have a few showers, generous amounts for uh, the windward sides of Maui and the Big Island this morning. Uh, drier conditions for leeward sides everywhere. But with those trade winds blowing in at gusty speeds, the whatever windward and Malka showers are coming in will be pushed over to leeward sides every now and then. But fewer showers are expected for Kauai and for Oahu today. We're likely to get a few showers in the overnight hours pretty much everywhere. But those showers will be pretty much uh, uh, very, very light in terms of rainfall totals. Now, high temperatures today running into the low 80s with the abundant sunshine for leeward size. All in all, we got some really nice stuff. Now, the surface is kind of taking a break except for a building northeast swell. Uh, likely close to advisory levels for east shores by tomorrow. And this swell is going to be picking up late today, and that UV index is high on the scale at 9. So we've got a long stretch of trade wind weather, really nice stuff. A little bit windy today, and the winds are running at moderate speeds all the way through Friday. And for the weekend, they really slow down. Keep it here on Hawaii News Now. We'll have all your severe weather updates. So right now, Japan's cherry blossoms are in full bloom, but instead of being a typical joyous occasion, scientists are worried about climate change. Selena Wang reports. Cherry blossom season is coming to an end in Japan. For thousands of years, these flowers have been revered, celebrated with Hanami viewing parties. Even during COVID-19, people have gathered from all around to enjoy these stunning sights. These blossoms, which only last a few days, are a reminder of fleeting beauty, but also of the lasting effects of climate change. Cherry blossoms have bloomed exceptionally early across Japan. Scientists say it's a sign of global warming. In Kyoto, Blossoms peaked on March 26. That is the earliest date in more than 1,200 years of records. Here in Tokyo, flowers reached peak bloom on March 22nd, the second earliest date on record. Now, these cherry trees are extremely important for climate change studies because of how sensitive they are to temperature change and because of just how far back the data goes. <laughs> Yasayuki Aono, a researcher at Osaka Prefecture University, tells me he's gathered records from Kyoto back to 812 AD from historical documents and diaries. In the last 200 years, the peak blooming day in Kyoto has been getting earlier and earlier as temperatures rise, he says. Higher temperatures and urbanization contribute to earlier blooming times. This spring has been unusually warm in Japan, he says. Traditionally, Sakura season is celebrated with picnics and parties and festivities underneath the trees, but they've been restricted this year because of COVID-19, with signs all over like this one reminding people that parties are not allowed. Cherry blossoms hold important cultural significance in Japan. They appear throughout Japanese literature and poetry. It's a symbol of life, death and rebirth. Here in Rapongi, the petals have all fallen the delicate blossoms replaced with green leaves, reflecting the fragility of nature and of our planet. Selena Wang, CNN, Tokyo. Gorgeous visuals oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, let's see what else the internet is talking about and talk about leveling up. You gotta hear about this. We're talking about this classic Super Mario Brothers Nintendo game, and it is sold for $660,000. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> The 1985 copy is said to be the one in finest condition that has ever been professionally graded. 
This one was purchased back in 1986 as a Christmas gift. I think I got one that exact oh, same course. year. I did, but I definitely opened mine. <laughs> <laughs> it was placed inside a desk drawer and forgotten for 35 years. Who would do that to Mario? Who doesn't open it? I know. Especially Nintendo back then. It was huge. Yeah. Now, whoever forgot about it is definitely rolling in the cash now. The previous record for a copy of Super Mario Brothers was $114,000. Again, this latest copy sold for $660,000. And wow. I was reading even more about this because, you know, I'm a big dork. <laughs> and why this one is really special is just only for a few months, really, when they produced this game, it was put in shrink wrap, and then they changed that plastic wrapping. Uh -huh. This one still has the original shrink wrap Got around it. it. So it makes it even more special. Did you used to collect um, Pokemon cards back in the day? No, but I'm hearing Those are all worth about a fortune it. now. Me and my brother would collect them, and we don't know where they are. Why did I go for the <laughs> X-Men cards? Why? They're worthless. <laughs> I, were, I saw the Pokemon story and looked up my X-Men cards, which are still in my mom's basement. Yeah. Yeah. No Maybe luck one year. Yeah. <laughs> so, John, do you know what you and Bobby Flay, the chef, have in common? Uh, meow. <laughs> yep, you guys are cat people. So, Flay is announcing his newest venture, cat food. As an only child with a working mother who he says was a crazy cat lady, that's what he said, the celebrity <laughs> chef jokes he was basically raised by cats. Now, Flay has designed a nutritionally balanced menu for cats that provides the right amount of protein and hydration to meet their daily needs. Now, the new Bobby Flay brand is called Made by Nacho in honor of Flay's six year old feline, but he says his other cat Stella likes it too. Some of the proceeds will go to the Every Cat Health Foundation and will also support the Best Friends Animal Society's No Kill Shelter. I used to have an orange cat like that and its name was Colonel Mustard. Yeah, Cute. my new cat's name's Dracula. Oh, yes. you didn't like that. <laughs> this is not a cat person. Just so I'm you know. I'm a dog person. I like all animals, but I prefer dogs. You do. You yes. Do. This All right. is really cool. Oh, sorry. I was jumping ahead of you. But we're talking about the weekend box office and Godzilla vs. Kong mm -hmm. really tore things up. And it's because it brought in more than $32 million this holiday weekend. Wow. Making it more than $49 million in gross revenue since its first five days of its release. That's really special because this is available on HBO yes. Max for free, which I haven't watched. But moviegoers say it's really cool to see in theaters, and that's why it's really racking in the dough for there. sure just to get outside again and to have movie theater popcorn i get yeah, it yeah i'm excited about that <laughs> no lie so mummy news right yeah so it? this in egypt nearly two dozen mummies were given the royal treatment as they were paraded through downtown cairo to their new home here's a report by ian lee it's a celebration fit for a king or rather a pharaoh Egypt rolled out the red carpet for 22 mummies. They paraded through the streets of Cairo with the kind of pageantry not seen in thousands of years. With great pomp and circumstance, the mummies are getting their due. These are the kings of Egypt. I mean, these are the pharaohs. Um, and so it is a way of showing respect. Officials moved the mummies from the iconic Egyptian museum to a new home, one better suited for their preservation. Modern-day chariots with special shocks carried Egypt's past kings and queens. The former rulers arrived with a royal salute, while the country's current ruler, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, greeted his predecessors. These ancient monarchs connect the country to its past, but also help with the present. People should understand that these pharaohs are incredibly important historically, and also important now, because this is part of the, Egypt's economy. The blessing of the Pharaoh looking after the people of Egypt, even in the afterlife. Ian Lee, CBS News. Beautiful. Super cool. Yeah. That was awesome. That's definitely on my bucket list. Yeah, I would love to go. We have a little bit of time for a little bit more yummy good news. <laughs> That's right. McDonald's is adding a new sweet treat to its menu. The fast food chain is launching the Caramel Brownie McFlurry. So the dessert is a combination of that vanilla soft serve ice cream, brownie pieces, and a caramel drizzle. It will be available starting May 3rd for a limited time only. Can I just say I've been adding caramel to my McFlurries for years now? Like at home? No, no. Like oh, I, at I just McDonald's? pay the additional charge. Yeah. So I don't... You're such a pioneer. From, I know. It was my idea. It was my idea. <laughs> you guys, that's going to do it for This Is Now Again, that governor's press conference coming up at 2.30. We're going to bring that to you live on your H&N digital platforms. 
Stay with us again for First at Four at KHNL as well. Have a good one.